Just wanna draw. Mm, chili chickens. Chili chickens. Uh -huh. I'm gonna draw penguins, then I'll put them here. Let's start now, shall we? Mm -hmm. I will. Well, I can remember going to the doctor when he was 20 days old and saying, what's wrong with my baby? He hasn't slept for three days. And he hadn't, he just cried. And, and then I just kept going to doctor after doctor after doctor. And they just said it was me, basically, in the beginning. And I started to believe them after a while. Things were getting worse. He was distressed and he was, couldn't settle, he couldn't sleep and eating was hard for him. Everything was hard for him. And he wasn't talking. He just might say one word or just a couple of sounds. But the doctors kept saying, we won't do anything really till he's three. So the appointment was made for the day after his third birthday. And then we went and that's when we were told that he had autism. And that was the worst day of my life. He told me the best thing I could do would be to put him away and forget about him. Just told me to give up. Well, I tried everything that I could think of. And then one day I just decided to try drawing to see if he could pick up that and he was really attentive to it he loved it from the very first drawing I've still got it it was pretty clear that there was something a little bit special a little bit quirky was the word I used quirky we kept using art as a form of communication so all over the house everything was labeled and there was paper over the table over the floor just art and pencils everywhere one day he just started saying when I grow up I'm going to be laser beak man and I just said, oh, good for you, Tim, you know, because I wanted him to think he can do anything. Sounded good to me. And then I thought, I better have a look at it. So I looked at this picture. I thought, that is really cute. He's a really funny, cute little character. So he was 11 when he started to draw them. And then we didn't have much money. I was just on my own with the two boys. And it was a friend's birthday. And so I didn't have enough money to buy a card. So I said, we'll make a card. So he made the first Laser Big Man card and it said, Laser Beak Man says, have a filthy, disgusting birthday. And we gave it to our friends who had friends that he was very prominent in, actually a disability art field. And he looked at it and said, that's great, we have to get you um, some money to get these cards made. And then he was kind of a bit of a guardian angel in the background and mysteriously sent us an envelope one day inviting applications for the VSA Arts Festival, which is the largest arts festival in the world. And Tim was only one of only four young adults from around the world picked, and that was when he was 16. I mortgaged the house, we went to the VSA, the ABC's Australian story came with it, showed it nationally, and since then it hasn't stopped. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and coming from the three, three, four, via cyber. Very sensitive character. Yes, he is, John. What's he good at? Um, he's really good at everything just like me, John. It's hard to beat. Hard yes, to hard to beat, beat isn't it? I've um, been to Austin, Texas and Washington, D.C. as well. It was for a, a special visa arts. Yes, I was only the only person from Australia. To be selected by a jury was just huge. Absolutely amazing that they picked him. So we went over there and he carried the flag into the uh, John F. Kennedy Performing Arts Centre. Australia! The Bahamas! Argentina! It still chokes me up every time I think of that. Canada! Well, wow. that's, that's a great honour. Sure it is, John. Mm. Did, who, who did you meet when you were there? Did you meet anybody exciting? Gene Kennedy Smith. What was the Kennedy family? Yeah, more of the Kennedy family. There were some famous people that love your, your drawings so much that they bought them and put them up on their wall. Kate Blanchard, she has one of my drawings. Laser Big Man tells the Weagles to shut up. <laughs> What's so funny, Mum? That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it is. You've got a very good sense of humour. Thank you, Stuart. Nick Earls, he has one of my drawings. Wayne Bennett has a, a drawing of a picture of a 
farm animals with Wayne Bennett as the coach with his kids in the house as well. Teresa Ray, Alex Perry, that's the one. I met him at a, a fashion one at the Gotta Be Port side one at a fashion for AIU about four years ago. We'd been asked by the ABC to pitch short content interstitials. We had to go and look at a room where we were going to have a showing of some of our work. I think I saw one of Tim's artwork, everything was perfect. The characters, the illustration, the comedy, and it just went bang. Who, who are these people? Where are they? We've got to animate this. It just sort of went within a matter of a minute. Whatever he creates is so pure. So you just have to try not to spoil it and that's it. The colours, the style, the characters, there was nothing to analyse or fault in any of them. Autism is such a cruel, all-encompassing, debilitating condition. It affects every part of your life. I think just to get out of bed in the morning is a huge effort. To do what he does, go and stand in front of crowds, talk to kids, try and encourage other people, and just get up and be happy and just find such joy in life, you know, you've got to keep up with that. What's, what's one thing that gets you up in the morning and makes you really happy? What's going to make me really happy getting up nice early in the morning and saying hello to my mum. But we started really, you know, at the bottom of the barrel um, with no hope and in a bad situation with nothing and some dreadful stuff that went on, a lot of dreadful stuff that went on. And then to have all these guardian angels and all these good people and for it to Tim, turn around and Tim do so much for other people, it's just mind blowing. Every chance he gets, every opportunity we have, Go for it and enjoy every minute of it. And don't try and make it something that it's not. Just enjoy what's happening right now. I'm so lucky, really. I used to do Lotto all the time. I gave that up. I think I won it. <laughs> I did. What could money? Money couldn't give me any of the what he gives me. Do you think Lazy Big Man will ever get married? Uh, yeah, he will get married. <laughs> to Lazy Big Girl. Lazy Big Girl, that's a good idea. Do you reckon Lazy Big Girl is going to come about? Oh yeah, she will, but I'm going to draw her one day. Yeah. What, 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 what colour hair will she have? Um, she'll have blonde. Blonde hair. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. Like mum? Probably, yes. So is he looking for a girlfriend now, Tim? Um, yes, he is. I'm surprised he's got time with all the other things that he does. I do, mum. Now I understand. Oh yes. Always look on the bright side of life. <laughs> <laughs> what was the one you told me on the in the car the other day you had a dream about it? What was it? Drag racing. Drag racing. So what's that going to be? Um, in the drawing it's got to be some men dressing up in drag. They go for a, a race. <laughs> yeah, this. <laughs> Say, so Michael, do you know what I'm doing in 2015 in four years' time? No. I'm going on a bike ride around Australia in 2015 in four years' time. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. All the way around Australia? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wear my latest big man t-shirts and draw some pictures when I'm over there. Then I'm going to have a black and yellow bike and I'm going to have a black and white helmet as well. Hell yeah. Well, so you go right around Australia? Yeah, I am. Individual, nobody's got my name.